Alright guys, so before we jump into today's video, I just want to say make sure to subscribe to the channel, click the big red button, and also be sure to turn on post notifications so then you know when I upload. So yeah, let's jump into today's video. Tonight, tonight. With white noise, uh, the objective is have a season that's about intel, that's about communication, that forces communication through those operators uh, that you meet. Well, Dokebi is a name from uh, Korean mythology, and it's actually a type of goblin. And it's a goblin that has the ability to inhabit inanimate objects. To achieve an operator, we are making at least 40 different iterations of a single character and each time it's, ah, we're going to keep this boot, we're going to keep this head. The glasses, it's something that we wanted to keep on the character. You know, it's not super tactical. She wants to keep her own signature on her and to show people that she's the, she's the hacker. And we really wanted to have an operator that play with sounds as an Intel or Counter Intel. She is a heavy Intel operator, and we, we just wanted to bring that back into Siege. Yeah, okay, yeah, he, he's really near me. Vigil is a great, you know, Intel destroyer. Information in the game is relevant, like two or three seconds stop. Vigil, uh, with his ability, makes information irrelevant from second one. Yeah, Vigil, uh, honestly, it was all about the mask. I think we did 50 different other iterations on the mask. I looked at it and I was like, oh, okay. For me, the mask came out as being more than just a ballistic mask. It was more than a look. Immediately, the backstory started filling in. You never saw me coming. Dokebi and Vigil represent kind of a way that we want to start doing things with our characters. When you play a game, you always imagine a story. You can't help yourself. It's almost like a human nature. You want to create stories between those characters. You can see that some of them just play really well together. We're crossing a line we used to not cross. And I think it's really interesting because uh, we're, everybody's enjoying it. Uh, because we're not constrained anymore into a specific neutral counter-terrorist unit. Now we're really creating uh, a new character with a huge personality. And it's the same thing with all the operators. We want to create more and more layers to them to really create some complex and multi-layered characterization so that it explains the way that you feel when you play them. Ever since that we had Ella in mind, we were already designing Sophia. We were really invested in creating that interaction between two sisters who have to deal with uh, a legacy that is bigger than themselves. Actually, the very first iteration we made on her, she was throwing these, all these gadgets, these grenades, actually, by hand. Mm, it lacked personality. When we got back to the simple idea of having a grenade launcher, we immediately uh, found it like to have a much more personality on screen, and also it opened for the possibility of having this bounciness on the concussion grenades. We really wanted to find this uh, Gameplay that doesn't really exist yet, this, this depth in terms of, uh, okay, how, how creative can you get when it comes to making it bounce and not exposing yourself but reaching a very specific point. We felt like it, it started to get really, really fun. There's a cookbook for Siege, you know, we know exactly how to build a Siege map. What we did with Tower was we made the um, inside and outside one. There's, there's no differentiation because you play normal maps, you go outside the map and then there'll be a warning if you're, if you're a defender, there'll be a warning saying, hey, you're outside the map, you'll be detected. In this, there is none of that. We try to bring something different and that's actually the case with Tower. We went a bit further. We had our siege formula and we wanted to have something super new and we kind of try, like coming in a nice in between and I think we always try to bring something new, but we're having our foundation of what makes a good siege map. The repel with the verticality, they were like, once when people were exposed to that, they were like, whoa, like, you know, because it really does give that feeling. It's, it's a nice interaction with the players where 
they push the maps to their limits and it forces us to push our limits even further. So we learn from them and we kind of adapt. Four last operators standing. We feel like there are many territories of siege uh, when it comes to the specific grammar of uh, how siege plays. Uh, what the round looks like, what are the different uh, phases of the round, uh, what do you do when you're alive, what do you do when you're dead. There's a lot of territories in there that we haven't explored that much. I'm very excited about a lot of things that we're working on right now. Yeah, that's, that's very exciting for me, is that the idea that we're not just repeating ourselves inside the same uh, boundaries, not just creating new operators, but also trying to expand uh, the global grammar and vocabulary that they're using to try and make this gameplay even more complex and, uh, and deep. I got one. One more, one more. Oh, I got it.